Is your home damaged by Hurricane Irma? If so, I have great news for you. Relief and funding for homeowners is here. There is a new relief program called Georgia CDBG Disaster Relief that has just opened here in the city of Brunswick. If you qualify for the program, you could be eligible to receive up to $75,000 rehabilitation or $150,000 in reconstruction. Please join me as we talk with city officials about this exciting new program. Stay tuned. It's all coming up next right here on Golden Isles TV. Hi, welcome back to the City Show. I'm here with uh, City Manager Regina McDuffie. How are you? I am well, thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Um, today we are um, on Mansfield, 503 Mansfield, and in downtown Brunswick talking about CDBG and disaster relief. Can you tell us a little bit about that? And uh, today's actually opening day, so tell us about that. Yes, we are very excited to be providing this service and program to the citizens of Brunswick. Unfortunately, it's because of our um, disasters that we've had, the hurricanes in the past, um, Hurricane Irma in particular, and this program is to provide assistance for rehabilitation and for repairs or reconstruction for homes that were damaged during those storms. So even though we had some unfortunate events in the community, um, the federal go government has provided some relief and recovery programs for us to provide services to our citizens. And we're very excited to be opening this outreach center um, for people to come and to be engaged in this program. It's very exciting, yeah. It is, what, it's been three years since Irma? Yes, and of course, you know, the federal government moves pretty slow sometimes, so they are just giving us the opportunity to provide the funding for this program. Um, the uh, City of Brunswick, we are hopeful to have a very good impact on um, a lot of different properties. Um, we're hoping at least 100 properties, um, if not more, to um, provide this service and um, rehabilitation. So. Uh, we are very excited about being able to come in and, you know, do some housing improvements. Well, wonderful for the homeowners, of course, but also wonderful for the city. Yes, um, we are hoping that we'll have an impact on some of the communities that have been um, devastated during the storms and to provide relief for the citizens. I, I think, you know, mentally it would be helpful to ha just have, you know, some repairs done to their homes and um, some upgrades done to their homes so that they can feel like they, you know, have gotten back to normal after these storm um, prod, uh, events have occurred. Right, and I'm sure people are excited and probably have been waiting for a while, and so we're so excited. Today is opening day, um, October 28th, and um, they'll be open from now on, but there is a, a process you have to go through. You do have to qualify for the program. So, um, and there are only two zip codes that you, that are, um, Well, that I will, right? I will allow the staff to get into more detail okay. about okay. that, mm -hmm. um, and tell about the program and how it's going to be implemented, but okay. we will be doing a lot of marketing. Um, we have hired some consultants from outside who have experience with disaster recovery programs, mm -hmm. so they will be guiding us as well, as well as the Department of Community Affairs for which this program is administered through. Okay, awesome. Well, this is great information and we're so excited and um, thank you so much. Thank you, I appreciate it. We definitely want to get the word out to the public. Um, that's one of the things that we will work really hard to make sure that people are informed and we communicate this so that as many people as um, can qualify and are eligible can be assisted with the program. Absolutely, so stay tuned because we are going to hear more details and exactly what you need to do, what the next steps are, so stay tuned. Hi, welcome back to the City Show. I'm here with Roxanne George. She's actually the manager of the CDBG program, the disaster relief program here that just started today. Hi, Roxanne, how are you? Hi, Adrian. I'm doing great. How are you doing? Good. Tell us, there are steps yes. as that you have to take and there, you have to qualify for the program. So. Tell us about that. That's right. So um, the first step really is um, to go to the city's website. And from there, people can easily find uh, two things that are really important. One is a brochure 
that has the checklist of all the documents and things that they will need in order to complete their application. Um, and the other thing is a survey that people can fill out online or over the phone with us or in the center to just um, do that basic first step towards completing an application. So once folks have filled out that survey, then they can just call us and the number will be 912-280-1999. Um, and somebody here will answer the phone and we will get them set up with an appointment with a case manager who then will take it from there and make sure that they're able to get all the documents that they need in order to, to walk through the application and see if they're eligible and all of that. So um, if people don't have access to the internet, we will have some laptops set up in here so that they can come in here and do it. We're, we're obviously being very aware of COVID-19 and so we will require people to wear masks. We have hand sanitizer at the entryway. We will set up this room so that people are socially distanced and we'll disinfect the laptops okay. after each use so people can feel as safe as possible coming in here and we can protect our staff and our clients because we know how important that is right now. Right, so first step, go to the website. Second step, give them, give them a call. We're gonna put the number on the screen so Great. you can do that and set up um, an appointment with the caseworker. They can kind of go through it with you and, and, and go from there. That's right, that's right. And, and we wanna make it work for you know whoever can do it. The, the other thing people need to keep in mind is that for the first 45 days, we will be prioritizing certain types of applications over others. So just for the first 45 days, if there is a senior over the age of 62 in the home, if there's someone with a disability, if there's a child, um, or if it's a low-income household, those are the applications that we're going to be prioritizing first because those are the highest need, obviously. The other thing that people need to know is that they must live in the 31520 zip code in order to qualify. Okay. And, and that is because the state identified that zip code as the most impacted and distressed area, along with just two others in the state. So oh, okay. that's where they're really prioritizing getting this work done, because they know there are unmet needs. Well, that's good to know. And um, I'm sure everybody does have a lot of questions. So like I said, we definitely will put the number on the screen for right. everyone. So Roxanne, this has been great information, but is there anything else you feel that people need to know? Just a couple of things. One is to just let people know that the 31520 zip code covers not just areas of the city, but there are also some homes in the county that could be eligible. The other thing is that we really want to encourage people who may have been turned down in the past by FEMA or some other agency because they had heirs property or tangled title issues to go ahead and apply for this program because we are partnering with a nonprofit law firm that can help them clear up those title issues and move forward in the program. Okay, excellent. Good, good to know. Yeah. Um, but thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, I yeah. appreciate your time today. Oh, you bet. Thanks for coming in. Thank you. Okay. Hi, welcome back to The City Show. I'm here with Travis Stiegel. How are you? I'm well, thank you for asking. You are the Economic and Community Development Director, is that right? That's exactly it. That's it. Okay. Well, we are talking today about this wonderful uh, recovery program, yes. the CDBG DR program. That's right. That's right. Um, can you tell us a, a little bit about that, the history maybe, and why okay. this program exists? So the program has actually taken us about two years. Um, to get to the point that we're at right now. Uh, we're very fortunate that um, housing and urban development work with the state of Georgia and the Department of Community Affairs to be able to provide us dollars um, in order to help our citizens here um, in both in the city and in the county to recover from damage that was done during Hurricane Irma. Um, we do know that it's, it's a little far off but the fact that um, we do now have funds to help help those individuals in their homes. And so um, it's been, a, like I said, it's been about a two year venture. The Department of Community Affairs has been very awesome in kind of walking us through the process and helping us out and making sure that we're able to stand this program up here, not only here in the city of Brunswick, but in two other localities also. And so 
um, that is the that is primarily the summarize of the history that we've um, right. So this is a special program specifically for this area because there is a, a statewide or a federal wide uh, disaster relief yes. recovery program. Yes. However, um, this is specifically for yes. The Yes. So this is specifically for city of Brunswick. Like I said, um, for us, we had a lot of, we suffered a lot of damage um, with Hurricane Irma, right? And so one of the things that we are going to do and continue to do as a city is to make sure that we um, are great providers of service and being partners here in our city. And so we understood along with the state that there are individuals that are still reeling from issues and, 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 um, and damage from their homes and so this is one of the ways that um, we are now helping those individuals get back on track right um, individuals that even if they receive FEMA insurance maybe help from their local churches and they still haven't um, been able to get back on their feet this is where we come in at and this is where these dollars come in to actually help out at um, we are in the midst of a first come first serve um, not only for the city itself, but also for the applicants. And so um, our goal now is to put about two to three million dollars in investment back into the city um, of individuals that have been helped, whether that is us being able to help them through um, their title issues or whether it actually is to have a tangible reconstruction or renovation of their homes. And so um, we're definitely dedicated to making sure that this process goes off without a hitch. Um, we now don't have the capacity issues. We've been very fortunate to have a very good vendor that has come in by the name of Tidal Basin, right? Um, they are going to be helping us with case management. They're gonna be helping us with construction. And so I think that we've done a very good job at hiring the very best team that we possibly could that is going to not only help us as a city recover, but also help the citizens also. Mm -hmm. That is wonderful. Yeah, I didn't realize it was really a whole team. Uh, you're sort of overseeing the whole process. Yeah, that's right. But you, but talk a little bit about uh, the team that you have in place and their expertise and, and all of Awesome. That. Yeah. So like I said, the first thing that we were able to do was to acquire an awesome, awesome manager for the program, Roxanne George. She is amazing, um, when it, especially when it comes to being able to um, connect with our citizens, but not only being able to connect with our citizens, but she's very good at what she does administratively, right? Um, once again, we have Title Basin. This company's been around for a while. They are primarily now operating on the big disasters that happen um, in Puerto Rico. So you have to understand is that they're working on a, uh, I want to say a $60 billion project in Puerto Rico, mm -hmm. but decided also to, after some vetting, that we hired them to come and help us. And so I want people to understand the capacity of the group that we have that is, a, that is coming to help us. Um, we're going to have a couple of case managers. So whether if you live in the city, whether you live in the county, it doesn't matter. You're going to get help. Um, we're going to have a construction team, mm -hmm. right? So we don't want you to feel um, nervous about talking to our group. We don't want you to feel nervous about expressing the damage. We have a team that's already put together. They're going to handle all of the assessments. They're going to handle all the inspections. And the truth is, we wanted to, once again, we wanted to make sure that this is a quality program and that everything that we're able to do to make sure that we're getting out to our citizens, that they're able to get that information. And, um, such a great team in place, so please take advantage of it. We're going to put the number on the screen again, visit the city website, please. and um, contact this wonderful team, and, and thank you so much. Well, thank you for having us. You're welcome. Have a great day. Thank you. We're excited to be able now to offer you the Community Development Block Grant Disaster Recovery Funding that's being offered to the citizens of Brunswick and the county. If you live within the 31520 zip code in the city or the county, please come down to 503 Mansfield. We're here to help you get your funding to repair your home, reconstruct your home, and also to help you clear your title. Once again, if you are in the 31520 zip code of the city or the county, please give us a call. Hi, welcome back to the City of Brunswick show. 
We're here with Matthew Hill, and he is going to be talking with SML Surf Company today in downtown Brunswick, located right across from beautiful Mary Ross Park. They have surfboards and all kinds of merchandise. It's an awesome place. Come check it out. Stay tuned to hear more. Hi, I'm Matthew Hill, director of the Downtown Development Authority, and we're here in beautiful downtown Brunswick at SML Surf Company with its owner, Jeffrey Gable. Jeffrey, how you doing? Doing great. How are you? Good, good. Thanks. So you've been here on Bay Street about a month now, right? About a solid month and a half. Um, I used to be on the back side of the warehouse, uh, just moved around front and, uh, you know, trying to get a little bit more exposure out front and, you know, being able to see the place a little bit easier. Okay. Yeah. And as Avery said, you build surfboards uh you have some nice merchandise here but you also do skateboards and people can build their own right yeah um i have right now i actually have someone in here she's uh finishing painting her board that we worked on together uh she did majority of work and it's 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 a fun project because you can get you know people that have never done this before to see all the steps and all the you know parts of building what is building the surfboard uh, all right all right well let's take a look inside we're back again inside SML Surf Company, and Jeffrey has one of his customers working on a board that she has built. So Jeffrey, why don't you tell us a little bit about that and what's going on here? Okay, what we have is, um, this is Christy Cavanaugh. She's come in and she wanted to make her own board. So had her come on in, kind of showed her the ropes, showed her you know what tools to use, kind of got her rolling on it. And um, she did majority of the work on it. And she's come in to do the paint job. Um, you know, we help, you know, kind of help her like getting the taping lines done, getting it ready to go. And, and she came, she picked the colors and what she wanted. Um, so this week will be, we're finishing up paint. Uh, I think she might come by Friday for just some touch up. And then by next week, we're going to have it in glass, ready to go. So here we are in November and Christmas time's coming up. So you do custom boards, but I know that, like Christy, people can build their own. Do you have any advice for people shopping or thinking about maybe a board for Christmas for somebody? Biggest thing is, I guess, having, you know, put an order in as early as possible. Um, you know, Christmas, they do take two to three weeks to get done, and that's pushing it. Um, I do have some stock boards this year. Last year, I didn't, I wasn't prepared for Christmas. You know, I kind of was doing them as, as they came about. And this year, I was able to kind of get some stock boards rolling a little bit quicker. So at least have some ready to go. But if you do want a custom where, you know, you want a certain paint job or a certain image put on there for, you know, your kid, your spouse, anyone, we can still get it done. You know, and I have some people that, you know, I do have some, a um, uh, couple kids that actually ride my boards in contests for me. And they come over and they'll help out sand and stuff and give me a good, you know, give me a little boost when I need it. Yeah. Um, well, and one of your students just... Uh one with his own board that he built right? well both um the two guys that i um that ride for me um it's liam and wyatt kolkmeyer um local guys on saint simon's um they've actually the contests are all held on tybee island and they both have i mean they pretty much came out of nowhere they surprised everyone they're like where are these kids from and they're like there's actually waves in saint simon's and these guys i mean they were in first place in um i think three different divisions like they just kept winning and winning and winning and winning. And the one he did, he came in here and shaped a board. And, and this winter, they'll be back in here. Both of them will be working on their next boards. Okay. All right, great. All right, well, here we are in my shaping bay. Um, it's kind of closed off from the rest of the shop just to keep the dust down. Um, you know, here's one of the boards that just um, shaped out. It's glassed and hot coated. Get ready for sanding. It's got its hot coat on there, which is the last coat of resin. And then pretty much going to get about a 400 grit sand. And then um, a lot of times I'll wet sand them, get them real fine, and then a wax and polish job. So that'll bring the shine out for it. Um, this is a board, I've, I've first time I've ever done a checkerboard, probably the last time I do a checkerboard. Um, it was two and a half hours of just taping and cutting. I mean, by the time you measure out each square and, and get it all taped and peeled out, sprayed, and then ready to go, um, it was definitely a, definitely a process. Um, most boards I shape, I mean, at this point now I can get a board done in about 45 minutes. Um, shaped this one the other day. This one's getting ready to go. And then this is my daughter Addison. She's shaping her own board. Um, she's 11. She's been in here. I mean, saw in hand, sandpaper covered in dust. And uh, it's been great. It's great for her to be in here. And I love seeing, you know, kids actually get dirty, get their hands dirty, you know, get them off an iPad and phone and let them actually do some work. SML Surf Co. is online. We have a website, www.smlsurfco.com, on Instagram and Facebook. And also, if you need to call, um, you can call or text 912-237-0243. It's 
feel free to text. It's probably the easiest thing because when I have the sander going, can't hear anything. Well, Jeffrey, thanks for showing us around. And Christy, thanks for being a good sport. <laughs> and remember, SML Surf Company has new boards in stock, uh, but they'll also do custom work and also skateboards. And if you're not ready to do that, you can come get a t-shirt or a cap. And we're right here on Bay Street across the street from Mary Ross Park at SML Surf Company.